The 2018 IndyCar Series opener at St. Petersburg in Florida was a pretty wild and very surprising race. The IndyCar Series as a whole debuted the new standard aero kit, which we still have today, which is basically all the cars having the same aero kit, where previously Chevy and Honda, the engine suppliers, were able to design their own aero kits. This created an advantage at certain tracks for one or the other, and IndyCar basically eliminated that by standardizing the aero kits for all cars. And the race featured three records that I believe are still unmatched to this day. Eight caution flags, 366 on-track passes, and 11 lead changes. But to everyone's surprise, a rookie and newcomer to the IndyCar series, Canadian Robert Wickens, driving for Schmidt Peterson Motorsports, which is now Aero McLaren SP, scored the pole position in his IndyCar debut. Two other rookies, Mateus Lice and Jordan King, also made the Firestone Fast 6. They qualified third and fourth respectively. If you're wondering where exactly Robert Wickens came from, from 2012 to 2017 he raced DTM, which is Germany's premier racing series, and before that he was working his way up the F1 ladder, where he got as high as the GP3 series, Formula Renault 3.5 series, and was even the test driver for the Marussia F1 team in 2011 before joining DTM in 2012 after realizing his F1 dreams might not come true. Robert tested for Schmidt-Peterson in 2017, so this wasn't exactly his first time ever getting into an Indy car. But he impressed a lot of people and he was ready to lead the field to green to kick off the 2018 IndyCar season. How will it be? Ready for the start of the IndyCar Series season and we're going green in St. Pete. That's a, oh, trouble! Around in turn two! Will Power! And he keeps going. But what did he damage on that machine? How did he get sideways there? That was almost just a straight between two corners. Well, Maybe somebody touched him from behind. No, I think actually with Wickens and Power going through there side by side through two and three, Probably Will just ran out of room, but give Robert Wickens a big nod up because he just ended up starting beside a guy that's been 187 starts in Indy cars with 32 wins. More trouble. That's Tony Kanaan around. And, he, and you saw Ryan Hutteray on pit road. He dove for the pit lane as the field took the green. He's looking desperately for reverse. Car still running. You can tell because the numeral on the digital readout is still there, and you can hear it. All right, Hunter Ray leaving pit road, Jan. Oh. Yes, you can hear the radio communication. Ryan Hunter Ray said the car would not accelerate. They made a quick pit stop to change the ECU, or engine control unit. The good news, as you heard on the radio, it looks like he is going to beat the leaders out and at this point has not lost a lap. A pretty event-filled first lap to say the least. Second place Will Power spun out, trying not to make contact with Robert Wickens, and he backed his car into the wall, damaging his rear wing. Ryan Hunter Ray had to dive into the pits immediately with an ECU issue, but fortunately they were able to fix that without him losing a lap. And Tony Kanaan also got spun around in his AJ Foyt entry, but thankfully he was able to keep the car running and didn't make contact with anybody else. And with all that happening, a full course caution was not needed. First series of corners. Oh. Hey, that looked like it just happened back. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Rear wow. wing. And by himself, just trying to get back on the power. We saw that. This should tell us. Yeah. Do they touch? No. No. I mean, give Will Power credit. He did not want to rub against Robert Wickens. Through all the opening lap chaos, the full course caution would eventually come out on lap 3 when Charlie Kimball went off in the last turn and ended up stalling the car. A few drivers elected to pit, but mostly everyone stayed out and somehow ESPN missed the restart live, which was pretty brutal because it was a pretty wild one. And Jordan King was able to get around Robert Wickens to take the lead. King, 24 years old from Warwick, England in his first IndyCar Series start. And the first three cars are rookies with Rossi being the Indy 500 champion in fourth. 
It did not take long for trouble to strike again as Graham Rahal loses it and gets into Spencer Piggott. Graham was able to keep the engine running and continue on, but unfortunately for Spencer, he ended up stalling the car and this would result in a full course caution once again. Oh. Right, he, was yeah. out, he was out of control before he got to the apex of the corner. Yeah, but when you come diving into the turn like that on the painted tarmac, it just has no grip and they lost the back end of the car and around he went. Fortunately, the yellow flag was pretty quick. Spencer Piggott would continue on and the green flag would wave once again with Jordan King leading the field down to turn number one. Wickens back out front after Jordan King overshot the corner. Now the fight for second. Rossi and King. Rossi slides and keeps it off the wall. Pretty wild restart with Robert Wickens retaking the lead in the first turn as Jordan King overshot it and then nearly making contact with Alexander Rossi at the end of the straight. Thankfully Rossi was able to keep it out of the wall and only ended up losing one spot in the process. This run would end up being the second longest of the entire race as by lap 20 Robert Wickens was still in control of the race with Alexander Rossi close behind and the two have broken away from the pack and built themselves a really nice gap as Jordan King who is in third remained to 7.3 seconds behind the leader. Around this time, some drivers were electing to make their first pit stops of the race as well, as some teams wanted to run the race on three stops while others wanted to run it on four. And this would definitely shake things up throughout the day. Race leader Robert Wickens would hit pit road for the first time on lap 25, with second place Alexander Rossi pitting two laps before. Robert Wickens learned how to qualify, learned how to lead. Now he's learning how to do an IndyCar pit stop. That's what he's new at. So far, things have gone fine. He was working on fuel saving, but just before he came in, they told him on that lap, use the push to pass, use the overtake, burn it as much as you want, go as fast as you can, with the idea being that his in-lap hopefully would be fast enough to keep him ahead of Rossi when he wins, goes back out. And that is exactly what happened. Wickens was able to get out of the pits ahead of Rossi as Rossi found himself kind of stuck in traffic and there was a few cars separating Wickens and Rossi. The 18 lap green flag run would come to an end when Mateus Lice, the rookie for AJ Floyd Racing, ended up in the wall, putting an end to his day. Coming off there, that's the exit of three, and boy, oh that yeah, just didn't that's turn. That's a hard hit, hard hit. Ooh. Do you think he might touch on the right he side? He could have, could have caught it and shot it across the track, absolutely, possibly. When the race got back underway, Sebastian Bourdais was out front with Spencer Piggott in second and Robert Wickens in third. Bourdais and Piggott pitted on an earlier caution, which cycled them to the front when all the leaders made their green flag stops. Marco Andretti, hard on the brakes to the inside of turn one. 98 car. Nice move for him because he really made a lot of ground coming up the stretch. Wow, ooh, look ooh, how the car steps out. Talked about cold tires and how the car doesn't have as much downforce. So many guys looking for opportunities. Ooh, oh, Dixon, pardon me, excuse and, me. And Sado, Sado. Sado's coming through. Now Hinch keep on outside Dixon. The racing on the restart would be intense, but it would only take two laps to bring the full course caution out once again. This time Scott Dixon and Takuma Sato made contact going into turn number one. And Sato. And Sato. Yeah, didn't they just visit each other? <laughs> and is Dixon stalled? Yes, Dixon yes. stalled. See the LED display behind the driver's head there? Right. So Dixon. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. He just couldn't whoa, slow down. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. On the paint and a veteran making that mistake. We also saw earlier in the race with Graham Rahal doing the same. But let's explain that. Yeah. That that, that paint, paint right is there. like being on yep. ice. Mm -hmm. You just can't stop. So Ooh. he thought yeah. he thought he was going to slow down. He didn't yeah. bump him. No, yeah. he yeah. ran him over. And you just rarely see a mistake like that by Scott Dixon. You're right. You know, well, I would say never. I have yes. never seen. That very is rare. rare. Very yeah. rare. Indeed, a very rare mistake by Scott Dixon but both drivers were able to continue on in the race. Bourdais would not pit again and remain the leader on the restart, with Robert Wickens right behind him in second. Being on ice. Coming to the restart, Scott Dixon, penalty avoidable contact to the rear of the field. Sebastian Bourdais, last year's winner, leads the field. Big scramble already as they come up through the gears.
the restart this time would be more calm and a little more tame. However, the green flag would only remain out for two laps again before Jack Harvey found trouble in turn 13. Yeah, I'm wondering if he went through that chicane in 12 and 13. Ended up mounting over the curb and hitting that inside wall. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, yeah. oh and you see the, the back ends coming around. Oh, no, there was yeah, a the top tires of the tire. Down. Tires, tires gone. Got no down. tire. Yeah. He, had, he was coming back into the pits with a flat right tire, and he got a little bit too quick, and, uh, and he just lost it. See where he hit the wall right uh, at the end? Yeah. Wow. He, wasn't, he actually wasn't going that hard when he hit, luckily. Several drivers would hit pit road under this caution, including the leader Sebastian Bourdais. This would leave Robert Wickens and Alexander Rossi back to the front of the field on the restart. I would say he doesn't. No, Wickens did a diamond shape on that last turn to get power down, almost like a motocross type of start, and he got the power down and no chance for getting past. Marco Andretti tiptoeing on that inside line, trying to get his teammate for second. But he did it perfect. He slowed down and didn't block his tires, and he is all over his teammate. Wickens would get a really good restart and give himself some breathing room between him and Rossi. This would also kick off the longest green flag run of the day of 57 laps. On lap 61, leader Robert Wickens would bring his car down to pit road for a green flag pit stop. A few laps later on lap 63, Alexander Rossi would bring his car down to pit road for a green flag pit stop. Robert Wickens would easily cycle in front of Alexander Rossi through the green flag pit stops, but these two guys weren't actually battling for the lead. Through the cycling around, Sebastian Bourdais actually ended up back in the lead. As if you remember, he pitted on that last caution while the other two did not. Wickens would end up in third, not too far behind Bourdais, and Rossi would end up in fifth through this pit stop cycle. Wickens would run down Bourdais pretty quickly, however once he got to him, he could not get around him. Wickens was pretty much glued to his gearbox for several laps before Sebastian Bourdais finally pitted on lap 77, giving the lead back to Wickens. With Wickens comfortably in the lead and no real pressure behind, he would make a green flag pit stop during a commercial break on lap 82. Second place Alexander Rossi would make his pit stop as the broadcast came back on lap 83. Wickens would still easily be ahead of Alexander Rossi after he completed his pit stop, but more importantly, both of them were well ahead of Sebastian Bourdais, who would effectively be in third place. As Wickens and Rossi's strategy was going head to head with Sebastian Bourdais' off strategy for the win of the race. With less than 20 laps to go, Robert Wickens still held a small lead over Alexander Rossi. The two were the fastest cars in class of the field all day, but Rossi was keeping Wickens honest and staying within one second of him, putting a little pressure on Robert Wickens. And it was definitely shaping up to be settled between these two drivers to win the race. With only 12 laps to go, it looked like Rossi was just about to throw the race away in turn number four while he overdrove it and got wide, but thankfully kept it out of the wall. Here's a replay. See what he was doing, he was thinking here's a chance to make up a little bit of time. But what a recovery yeah. right at the last second. Yeah, because he thought Wickens is gonna get boxed up behind. DeMello. Because of this, it looked like Wickens had this race all but one. But unfortunately, with only nine laps to go, the inevitable would happen, and you guessed it, a full course caution. Caution has just come out here at St. Petersburg for a car into the tire wall in turn 10. It's Rene Binder, the Austrian, in his first IndyCar Series start. He's overshot the next to last corner. And the gap that Wickens had on Rossi is gone. We have a race. I'm not really sure what happened here on the restart as I'm missing a chunk of footage here, but the race would get restarted with only four laps to go. Wickens would hold off Rossi going into turn number one, but the yellow flag would come out once again when Max Chilton would hit the wall and stall his car. And many thought the race may have been over at this point, but with pretty much no damage done to Chilton's car and relatively no cleanup besides Chilton needing to be refired, the caution was very quick and the race was able to get restarted with only two laps to go remaining in the race. Novak will call the green flag here. Rossi trying to stay right with Wickens. Here they come as the pace car heads to pit road. Green flag, two laps to go. Rossi is close enough. Looking, looking, turn one. He slides, there's contact. Wickens spins. Bourdais goes through. Sebastian Bourdais leading with
with Graham Rahal behind him. Hinchcliffe inside of Rossi. And Wiggins sits stalled in turn one. Unbelievable. Yellow for Wiggins car. Full course yellow, full course yellow, pits are closed. Wow. Oh, man. And that yeah, should do it closed. for Sebastian wow. Bourdais. He's going to get the caution at the white flag. And just like that, one of the most impressive debuts in IndyCar history comes to an abrupt end, going for the win with two laps to go. I don't blame Rossi for trying. And I remember actually being pretty pissed off watching this race when this happened. But like we saw two other times during the race, getting down on the inside on that white pane of the runway just doesn't slow down the car enough and ends up causing an accident. This would relegate Robert Wickens to an 18th place finish. And I feel like because of this incident, his impressive debut definitely gets overlooked. And it really is a true shame that what happened, and it sucks for Rossi too, as he ended up getting passed by Sebastian Bourdais and not winning the race himself. But Sebastian Bourdais, on the other hand, played an amazing strategy with Dale Coyne Racing, and it was able to pick up a well-deserved victory. I would definitely not say that the team didn't deserve it, because they definitely did. Previously, so now he looks in his mirror, sees Rossi come on the inside. Perfect line here, but Rossi's already sliding. We talked about less downforce mm. in the car, and just hits the back. Back end of Wickens. Yeah. See, he didn't have this run on him last time. He had no choice. He had to yeah. go for that. Wicked. He had no choice. Oh. This is where he starts to slide. Yeah. Fans love it. Listen. What a great race. Oh. See, he wasn't this close. This will show us. This will show us. Now, I'll say that the stewards are reviewing the contact between the 6 and 27. Uh, what purpose? So well, it doesn't can, do 6 any good. Who cares? <laughs> because yeah. Rossi's going to finish in 4th, yeah. and they could penalize oh, okay. him deeper sure. into the grid. But they, they can't give him back. They can't give Wickens back the no. win, no. Yes. Wow. Well, uh, this day has had more than a ch I think the word you used on the opening was chaos. chaos. I've repeated yeah. it several times. Uh, we finish in chaos as well after a late restart. Now watch this. You the nailed car it, though, front, Scott. You nailed it. He usually is diming this, comes out of the diamond like a motocross, and he's gassing it now. No, but what happened the time before, he got a jump on him. This time, he didn't let him. He was exactly. right on his gearbox. And he was close enough that he could make a run for it. And when he went, he just went, I'm going. Kind of Everybody like Kanan did at Indy and got away with it. Checkered flag for Sebastian Bourdais. His second win in his hometown of St. Petersburg. He lives just a few miles from where the race course is set up. He says he's proud to be from St. Petersburg. He's proud to represent the city. I'm proud to be a St. Pete resident. Well, that'll wrap it up for today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think about this situation. Do you remember Robert Wickens' awesome IndyCar debut? Or do you remember this race for Sebastian Bourdais fantastic strategy win for Dale Coyne? Like the video to show your appreciation or dislike it if you didn't like it. And subscribe to the channel for more great motorsports content just like this. And I hope I'll see you guys in my next one. Take care, everyone.